Hi everyone. So very good morning. So we'll start now. So in last sessions, what we have done, so we saw that. So when we had load, how to load the data. So from AWS to our Snowflake tables. So by using so the integration object, right? So for this, so what we have done, so first, so we created a integration object. So, and then, so we created a stage, the form file format. After that, we have implemented a copy command. So when we are doing this, so what we required first, so we need to know, so our, the storage location, where your file is available and then so we need a ARN details so these are the role details so for the aws account so which we are using so these details if you know then only we can able to create an integration object so now so <clears throat> today so we'll see so with the, with the same thing the same steps same approach so how to implement so json and then parquet files so in the last sessions, what we have done, we have so created so CSV files, so comma separated delimiter, and then so we have used a pipe separated delimiter, right? So these things, so what we discussed directly, we can use copy command. Directly, we can use the copy command. So when we are copy the data from stage to the table, so direct copy command will work. But in case of if it is a semi-structured data, it's a pocket file or the JSON file, then we can use, so we cannot use direct copy command like this. So these things, so whatever the JSON and then pocket files, it will be stored in the form of variant data type. Variant data type. First, what we need to do is, we need to convert this variant data type to our respective data type. Then only, we can able to use a copy command otherwise it is not possible so these are for the json files and then so parquet files let's see so what is this files how it looks like this will be in the form of nested files let me show you so let's log in into aws console for that show you something and one more thing parquet files we can able to read directly well, we cannot able to read directly so we need to convert that parquet files so into json format or csv format then only we can able to read the data otherwise it is not possible just observe the difference between so what is the difference between json files and then parquet file and csv files so these files are so parquet files are column nerd format it is going to store in the back end in the column nerd format and all are compressed only and all are splittable but when it is coming to readable format if you observe see this one parquet file is not readable so these are the not readable format if you want to read this parquet files always we need to convert into a so json format or csv format then only we can able to read the files so these are the JSON and then Parquet are nestable. So nestable means what it means by this is, let me show you here. Let's log in into Snowflake. Uh, AWS account. Oops. Now in S3 bucket, so the here S3 bucket, we are going to keep the files in the respective folders. Now in the bucket, and then you can see JSON and then Parquet. When you come to JSON, so these are the JSON files. So click on the JSON files. If you want to read that action and then query with S3. And so just when you click on this is the document so if you give directly 
run SQL query now observe this one so it is not allowed so you have to select document JSON content type is a so it is meant now if you observe see this one how the data looks like here see this this is column name this is data again this is column name this is data first column second column third column fourth column till last column this is the last column and the first row all these records related to the first row observe this all these records related to first row once all the columns is completed again it will start with the same the first column this related to the second row second column second row third column second row fourth column second row like this so it will be in the form of nested values now observe this so complete file it is in the form of nested and one more thing so let me show you here so just observe the structure how it looks like see this one so if you have so account number two so modified date so every first for all the columns and then first first row first row after that so all the columns again the second row after that all the columns again third row so it will be stored in the form of this so format the same format you can able to see it here also right this is a json format now if you try to see so let me let's see so parquet files how it looks like <laughs> let's come back and then this is the parquet files here select the new parquet files we selected the parquet file format here now observe the type parquet right so the extension also so it will be in the form of so parquet so now if you observe see this one type is a parquet file right okay so now let's come here We selected and then we are trying to read query with s3 select and when you observe see this one output settings so it is asking you can select any csv format if you want to read these pocket files you cannot read directly you have to convert into a csv or you have to convert into a json format then only we can able to read otherwise directly we cannot able to read these json files or ca so pocket sorry pocket files we need to convert into json or csv now if i try to run directly observe this output so serialization is required right and so let's select so let's say for example json and then so run observe this now you can able to see that right now you can able to see that and one more thing so when we are handling with this uh, the pocket and then json files so observe one thing so these names right column names are case sensitive here when you are converting the variant data type this one will store in our snowflake so in the variant form so when you are trying to <laughs> convert this so this the exact the names we need to give so if you observe some of the names here see this one this is a so it's like you can able to see this is so percentage and then so bachelors so you can see so so bachelors here right and the same way so you need to give so this is so always case sensitive so how the column looks like here if you have any gaps here or if you have so any like upper case and then lower case the same way we need to give so when we are converting the column names if you observe one thing here let's come to this and then if you observe the json files you can able to see clearly what so i'm trying to 
tell here just a minute it's it should be document click on a document to read the file now if you observe see this one so underscore id right this is the column name what defined in the json so file so the same way so we need to define in our copy copy command also here if you observe we have a space right so before a before average we have a space after that again we have a space again we have a space the same way we need to so define a column when we are converting observe this after percentage we have a space the same way so we need to go after the percentage so we have a space after that so we have to give the same column name so when you are converting this is so case sensitive how the data looks like here how the column names looks like here right see this one this and the so so you can able to see the difference here some columns are different format some columns are format the same way we have to give when we are converting this is the one thing what we need to remember when we are converting so now is, so we is have there, yeah. is, is there any limit limitation of the length uh there is no limitation uh, and even in snowflake or as well snowflake as well there is no limitation so but so for the best practices what they will do is if it is a huge volume of the file they will split the file into less than 1 gb of the file so then so we will load normally when we are implementing a copy command so here so once so if the file is available in the stage what we will do we will implement a copy command right to track it back easily so we will split the file into less than 1 gb file and then we will ask the source team to send the files so less than 1 gb so that is the best practices so we will use that we follow. that we have to do manually or that snowflake will take care okay, of then, so snow, no 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 snowflake will not take care so in the source side they will split the files they will use a split command and then they will split the files and then they will keep in the same format so the same splitted files into this particular location so whatever the location we are picking right so from here mm -hmm. so here if you observe so this is the so file sizes right so the same way they will split the files and then they will keep it into these locations they, they means azure will split or means user has no, no. To split. The source, source team will split okay. so who will send okay. the files to us right source team will split the data we will give the clear instructions to them so this show file should not be greater than so one zb of the file it should be less than one zb so based on that they will send the files to us okay okay, okay. so now so one more thing here so when uh what we have to do so these are the json files and then pocket files now let's see so any one specific thing so first let's uh pick a json or so pocket any one particular file and then so let's try to implement it so first we will so go with so pocket so this is the pocket okay fine so we'll go with the pocket so first what we required so we will we need a structure right so we will take a structure so here when we are creating structure if you observe here in the command let's come here so that i will leave this let it be and under this we are using file name and then file row number if you observe in this particular folder we have a three files right if you load all the three files into the same stage and then once these files when you are loading these all the file structure should be the same the data types and then so column names so when it is same when we are loading all the files into one particular table if you want to know so which file so which record came from which file number then what we required so we need to use the file name and then file row number so that's why we are additional columns we are implementing and then we are implementing a timestamp also so timestamp column load timestamp to understand the so timestamp so now when we create so let's create the table structure now the table structure is created so this is the pocket structure the table structure is created so this is fine then so what is required so if you want to interact the snowflake has to interact with this particular location then we need to know so where this file is available right 
so this particular location we need to create a integration object then only we can able to so pick the files from particular location this particular location right json in the inside the json we have all the files if you want to the complete location then copy s3 uri so when you are doing this now so previously what we have done when you created an integration object so what is the location we have given so if you observe above so this is the path what we have given when you created an integration object right so now when you create when you describe the integration object previous integration object describe so last class we have created an integration object s3 int right when you done this so if you observe here see this one the, the location allowed location is s3 so this is the csv and then so specific file we have created and then we created another one another integration object int1 right this particular integration object when you create so this one so this is allowed location is csv right so instead of this so if you want for example so every time regularly we are picking the files from these three locations one is from csv one is from json and the one is from so parquet location so instead of like a creating one by one integration object we can create so all the for all the locations one integration object but when you are creating a stage we can differentiate the files path location so it means so let's let's observe this so how we can able to do that so we will create an integration object here now so we will create integration object for all ent all this is for so csv and then json and then parquet once this integration object is created no need to create again and again the same integration object for the same locations we can use the same integration object but if you are using the same role if you are using the aws same role then we can use the same integration object if the role is different then you need to create a separate integration object now the role is here this is the role right now we are creating integration object for all the location this is the role and if you observe see this so allowed location we need to give it for csv and then we need to give it for the json and then at the same time so parquet also now we are trying to give so for all the locations here this is for csv and then same way for the json this is for json also this this we are giving it for the json this is for the json and then again so we need it for the pocket so file so part so now let's select the pocket and then copy so now so we are when you observe here <coughs> this is pocket this is for pocket what we have done so we are creating integration object s3 int all for all the location allowed location or all the location now observe this one so if you use this integration object one so then it will be used only this particular csv folder only it will allow only csv folder if you use so int only int it will allow only the csv inside the csv only the specific file but here our requirement is we need a same integration object for all the locations then we can able to do like this so you can use the role and then you can so define the so what are the folders so we need a access now this integration object once it is created so this is the role here and what we have been this is the all the location now if you describe describe integration what is the integration name yes three integration all now observe this this is a separate integration object what we have created now you can able to see see this one storage allowed location one is csv another one is a json another one is a pocket now observe this all these are the storage allowed location you can able to see that right and so here so what are the things we need to get it from the integration object once it is created so we are going to we need 
this external ID and then user ARN details. This is the user ARN details. The user ARN details will be the same when you are using the role, the same role when you are using this. If the role is changed, then only user ARN details will be changed. Otherwise, it will be the same. But so when your integration object, when you created each and every integration object, your external ID will be different. Now, this is the external ID. Now, let's come here where we need to also update this one. These details, we will give it to the AWS team to update that in trusted relationship policy. Now, let's come here in the roles section. You can select the role and then relationship policy edit. So here, if you observe this here, we have to update the details. Let's copy this one. Okay. And then if you observe the user here and details, so let's see 9384. Observe this 9384, right? The same user here and details because of the role doesn't change. Okay, these details, so let's update it. Now, once we have updated this, then only we can able to create a integration object because then only we can able to see the so data from the external stage. So when we have created, now we have a integration object and then, so we have created a trusted relationship policy. Then what we need to do? So we need a file format, then we need to create a stage. This is the pocket file. So now let's create a file format. This is the file format. Just we are creating a file format here. When you are creating, you can use. So this database, this is all we are connected to already. The class database and then public schema. And then just give the file format, pocket file format, type equal to format, pocket. Now the file format is created. We can next. So we need to create a stage. When you are creating a stage, observe this. So what we are doing here, this one, creating a stage. So I need to create a stage here. Now this is the stage name. We are giving external pocket stage, the stage name. And URL, if you observe, we have given the allowed location all the URLs in this integration object s3 int all we have given all the allowed locations but here in this particular thing what we need to do we need to pick the files from the pocket folder we need to pick the files from pocket folder so we have to give so only the pocket folder so till here so if you give if you need to pick only any specific file what you need to do so only the specific file path we have to give. Otherwise, if you want to pick all the files, we can give the complete folder URL here, the pocket folder URL here. If you click on here, S3. So if you give the pocket folder, so how many files we have there in that particular folder, all the files it is going to pick. Now observe this one, pocket. So you have how many files we have? Three files we have. Three files it will pick. If you want to pick only any one specific file and then you want to load it into the stage, then what you need to do, you can copy this only the specific file. So after the pocket, you can give this file extension. So this one, right? If you copy, the file extension will come and then only that particular file will be copied into this particular stage. But here what we required, we need to load all the three files from this folder and then we need to load it into stage area and we are using integration object and then file format file format we have created file format equal to pocket underscore format this is the file format now so just observe this we are creating a stage area what we are doing we are creating stage now the stage is created once the stage is created so what will happen here so when you are creating a stage we are telling that this particular from this particular path pick the files and then keep it in this external stage. When you observe the list at the rate, so this is the stage area for the parquet. Now observe this, 
so you can able to see all the three files here see this one all the three files so you can able to see that with that date timestamp right all the three files is available here now from this particular thing so we need to copy generally what we will use copy into right so copy into the what is the table name the table name is so this is the table name so healthcare parquet and then from the stage area what is the stage area so this is the stage area right great this is the stage area generally we will give this one right when you are copying copy into the table from this particular stage so if it is csv file so like a comma separated delimiter or pipe separated delimiter direct this copy command will work but in case of parquet and then so this uh, json loading when you try to implement this observe this what it is telling the parquet file format can produce only one column type variant object array right so use csv file format if you want to load more than one column see this if you see that so how the data looks like here select for example dollar one from the stage so this is the stage area right so you can able to see the so directly from the stage area how the data looks like <clears throat> now observe the data how it looks like see this one see this this is it stored so in this format this is variant data type this is variant data type so each and every nested so first so for all the columns so every thing it has loaded into variant data type see this one so this is for the second one this is for the third one so this is for the fourth one so every record so and then every row it has stored completely it is stored into so this format this is variant data type now so if you try to load the same thing into the table it will not understand what is the table structure this is the table structure what we have created but how the data looks like in the file the variant format right so if you try to load this it will not allow you to load into this particular table structure then what we need to do we need to convert these data types into the respective data types then only we can use a copy command this is more very important thing so now just observe this what we need to do in this particular situation so a simple thing so we can use copy now observe this copy into copy into observe this the table this is the table and instead of from so this particular stage area directly we are giving each and every column if you observe dollar one so this is the index so the column one right so for all the columns so dollar one so column name that you are converting into data type into this particular column you are converting into the where care data type again another column you are converting into where care where care means it will allow everything right so we are converting into where care and the next so when we are working with json we will see so how to convert into respect to data it depends on the so our the table structure right so now everything so this every column we are converting into where care and then so this is the syntax to convert the data type so after that we are loading so when we are converting so these are the columns still from here to here after that we have a so file name and then file row number so that's why we are giving file name and then file row number from where from our stage area now when you execute this then only it will allow you to load the data now observe this all the three files the data has been loaded into this particular table so each and every file so you can able to see so these many records is available so 2053 records and and then so 1882 so 2012 these many records is available all the data has been loaded into this table let's refresh it and let's come to the pocket table and then you can able to see the data here now so this all this data has been loaded properly now right 
so one thing so what we need to the all the approach is the same there is no difference but only one thing is when you are using a copy command we cannot load directly so we need to convert into the respective data types then only we have to load the same rule for your pocket files and then json files also this is a pocket file right now let's see it for json files now here come to this particular bucket this is the json files small right? doubt dinesh yes yes, yes. yes, yes. Go i missed the initial Fine. part so i heard mm -hmm. from where we created that uh, integration object everything so did we change mm -hmm. any changes in s3 for that parquet file no we didn't change anything yeah okay okay when mm -hmm. i just joined when you mm -hmm. selected that select uh, query from s3 so that's why okay then okay. We didn't change anything. Only the thing is when you created an integration object, so we have given allowed location for all the folders. Instead of creating one by one integration object, so we can do like this also. Then the same Not, integration object we can use. Yeah, for I everything. got this. I got this. I think I said in S3 bucket, you S3 selected bucket some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you showed some percentile. I'll, I joined at that time, so I didn't. Uh, oh, okay, uh, fine. That That's one. I will, I will show you here. So just to view the the files so how you can able to view the files here now if you want to see the files just click on that and then you can able to see with the query s3 select right and when you click on run sql query you can able to see the see this one right how the data looks like here the same way so it is a case sensitive the same way we need to define in copy command also we are converting here right when you are converting the column names here, the same way how the data looks like here, the same way we need to define there also. This is case sensitive. Okay, this is the thing what we have discussed before that integration object. Okay, so now, so this is the JSON files. Now, so this particular thing we need to note. For the JSON files also what we have done, so we already we have an integration object. No need to create again. Directly we can create a stage and then directly we can use a so this one uh, file format we can create a file format after that so we can use a copy command the file where the files is available files is available in this particular json folder for this if you observe integration object this is already available so no need to create again so if you are using the same role again if you are using same role now we are so in the same within the same role so when we are using, so we can able to access these files. Now let's pick the files from the JSON folder, and then we will try to load it into a JSON uh, table. So for that, let's come here, JSON. I will send you all these file formats to you, so you can so directly just try to implement it. So this is the structure here, come here. then so we will get a we'll get json this is a json structure okay that we have created a stage we have created a table structure no need to create an integration object already we have created an integration object for the so json folder also so then what we can do so we can use so directly we can use a so file format so after that we can create the stage area so file format this is for json format so json just you need to specify json if it is a csv what we are specifying csv right so create a replace file format json the format is created then what we need to do we need to create a stage when we are creating a stage this integration object not required so because already we have created for the all the locations so now we need to create a stage area now when we are creating a stage area so this is for the json the stage area should be the different right so when we are working with like so any uh, project so always the best practices your stage will be different the, always the bucket will be different so for the file format you will create a separate file format and then you will use a separate so integration object so, and then you will use a separate roles also in a AWS run for the best practices. So now, so in the next session, we will discuss that. 
so when you are working with the snow pipe now here if you observe so we are creating a separate stage so because so we need to keep the json files into this particular stage so in case you don't want all the files you don't want all the files you want any specific file again you can give the extension here now integration object what we have given integration object is for s3 intr otherwise instead of this if i if we give s3 int then it will not allow you to pick the files so because in this particular integration object we didn't give an allowed location this allowed location okay so in this particular integration object we have given this allowed location so now let's create a stage area stage area is created so now observe the files here list at the rate this is the stage external stage area now observe this the files is available here all the files now so what we need to do so we will try to so load the data so before that again here if you try the copy command direct copy command it will not work if you want to see the data from external stage you can use so dollar one from so what is the stage area this is the stage area now onto this and we are using this again it will be a variant data type see this one these are the variant data type so how the data structure observe the structure of the so uh, columns each and every columns here right so with the space and then after that you have a column name here with the percentage after that space after that column name right the same way so these things you need to convert into our respective data types so now here so to convert that so what we will use in a copy command we are going to implement the thing till here here so the this is the color stage area and then so this is the file this is the table so copy into this particular table from so select observe this what we are doing so how the uh, column name we have defined observe this dollar one this is the syntax to convert that so because so all the so dollar one generally when we are using dollar one comma dollar two column one column two right it is taking it as a all it in a single column right so now here underscore id the same way we have given here so this one and then again so we have a space here so and then we have a again we have a space here the same way uh, uh, hi dinesh uh, one doubt yes sir okay, tell me yeah how, how we will get that uh, particularly this column is uh, i mean we didn't check each and every file mm, mm, mm. so how, how we will get this case sensitive mm -hmm. this structure so we will receive from the so source thing so otherwise we have to ask so otherwise so we never know right how the so file looks like and then what is the so column names and all these things okay so these okay. so details be given to us otherwise so we cannot able to do that okay now if you observe okay see this one so this particular thing so if it is an integer we are converting into integer if it is a data type the so float we are using a float right so like this see this and the and one more thing here here also observe this how that looks like the column name the same way we are trying to convert into the data types then so we have to use a copy command so then when we use a copy command after the conversion then it will load the data so each and every file so we have around so 30000 records all the data has been loaded to the table so this one is a so json format json format so only the thing is so what will change here the file format will change and then we will create a separate stage here so okay why you need to maintain a separate external stages for the each and every file format let's observe for example in previous we created for the parquet stage right if you keep the all the files so when you are giving so till here if you give the url so all the files it will if you will try to load into the same stage area then you will have json files and then parquet files and then csv files every file it will be there so when you try to use a copy command 
when you try to use a copy command here copy into the table from the stage area then all the files it will be there so then if you try to load so all the different files into the one table structure the table structure will be different and then files will be different it will not allow so always so what we need to remember is so your bucket will be different and bucket why it is different we need to maintain so we'll tell so bucket should be the different and then integration object should be the different here what we have given integration all so we have given from the all the file formats right but generally it will be a different so why it is for example here what we are doing every file whatever the files available in this folder manually we are copying right manually so we are copying so into this particular table so from the stage area when you are doing this so we are creating so creating the stage when you know the file is available in this location then we are creating an integration object after that we are creating a file format after that we are creating a stage area after that we are using a copy command right so these are the things okay, manually we are implementing now yeah Okay, can question? we escape can we escape a staging area in no, any case possible. no no not okay. possible Come on. we cannot do that okay so always okay. The, so our snowflake first we need to keep the files into the stage then only from the stage we can able to load the data into the table okay that is the process okay sorry uh, you are asking something kumar Yes, yes, yes. What I was asking, actually, I'm not aware of uh, more about the JSON. So, uh, is this uh, is this uh, storing the data like key and value pair, or it stores the hierarchical data also? It's it's uh, not. It's exactly we can say that it's a key and value pair. It's just it will store how the data looks like, right? So, it's a different variant data type format. It's a nested values. That's it. Let's say if I am assuming about mm -hmm. XSLT, uh, that mm -hmm. that is that stores the hierarchical data as well. Zero, I mean, so occurrence okay. one data will be also there. Like like there is a state and there are ten ten customer. Then in another state there are uh, uh, five consumer. Okay. So, that is XML format you are telling, right? Kind of XML XML format. Uh, right, right. Okay, okay. That it will allow here also. So how we can because this is I think this is one of the important aspect we look we need to look. Mm. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Kumar. Will Will you show some example on that? In oh, future. We'll see that. Okay. Okay. I will, okay. I will, I will, I will. So try to pick one XML and then so we'll see that. So how to do that? Okay. So now so let's come to this one. So what we have done here. So whenever the file is available in this any of the folder so let's say for example so let's assume that in this particular bucket in the csv folder or json folder or pocket folder if the file is available here then we are implementing a integration object then we are implementing a stage file format then we are implementing a copy command right but so generally so what will happen so when you are working in any project in real time, when you are working with that, we never know when the file will come into this particular place, right? Particular AWS S3 location or this particular folder. We don't know. So when, so the source file will keep into this. If this is not in our control, right? Then if you want to load, whenever the file is available in this particular location, so it has to identify, it has to send a notification to our snowflake the file is available in this particular location our file has been arrived file has been arrived those things we can handle by using notification service just remember so that is a notification notification service if so aws want to create a notification service they can able to create it for the bucket level not the folder level that's why we need to maintain a separate bucket so for the different file formats bucket level so after that so once you create this we will see that so how to implement in next session so how to create a notification how to create a snow file 
So this is related to the snow file. The main intention is whenever the file arrives into this folder automatically. So instead of doing all this process manually. So once you create a snow file, automatically it has to pick the file from the pop folder and then it has to load the data into the stage area the stage area it has to load into the the stage area which we created after that it has to implement a copy command directly it has to implement a copy command so all these things without any human interaction it has to implement so for that so we have a concept of snow pipe that is a future in the snowflake so you call it as a snow pipe or we can call it as a continuous ingestion continuous ingestion so whenever the file is available if you know the exactly when will the file arrives then we can do that in a task right and then we can schedule so but we never know when the file will be available in that particular case situation so for the bucket so we will create a notification let me show you something here if you come to the bucket in the properties you can able to see the notification notification service observe this one here we have a notification service this notification service what it will do is once you create a notification service this aws whenever the files arrives into this particular folder this by using this sqs queue so this is so one of the concept in aws so by use to send the notifications by using sqs queue it will send the notification to our snowflake to snow pipe it will send the notification to snow pipe snow pipe what we will configure is we will configure in a snow pipe so from so which particular so stage it has to copy the data and then where it has to copy those things will be configured in snow pipe then automatically so instead of implementing all these things so manually one by one automatically it has to load the data from the respective stage to the respect to table but when you are doing that so snow pipe like continuous ingestion so file format should be the same the structure should be the same file format each and every file format and then at the same time integration integration all these things should be the unique and then stage stage so these all these things and then at the same time role also so when you are creating this, so generally when you are implementing Snowpipe, so your bucket should be the unique and then file format, integration, it should be unique and then stage and then role. And then so by, so anyway, so this table structure also, table structure. So all these things should be the unique. Then we can able to implement a Snowpipe. So if you implement some different, different file format, the same the snow pipe then it will not work snow pipe should be unique for the different file format so every table structure then only the this continuous ingestion will work so by automation so the kind of we can consider this as a automation so we'll see exactly so how we can approach will be the same there is no difference again to define a integration object so we will create a integration sorry to define snow pipe we will create an integration object we will create a stage area and only the thing is in a copy command we have directly copying right instead of copying here what we will do is we will define a snow pipe here we will define we will so implement this copy command we will insert this copy command within snow pipe so that is the only change we will see that in the next session how to implement it any any questions uh, here yes i have a question uh, yes. That, uh, yes. Let's say if we are not using this cloud, and we have mm -hmm. to, we have a file file server at our our in prem uh, system. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how uh, mm -hmm. this, this will be uh, means taken care means snow pipe. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In prem servers also it uh, doesn't matter. So we can able to so do that. So but only the thing is so somehow some with some mechanism you need to send a notification to Snowflake. So by okay. using a snow pipe. Uh, okay. So do you have any any, any program or any, any such example for that uh, through Python or through anything else? You can send a message. Mm -hmm. Okay. I because, don't have the handy uh, Kumar. I will check that anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Dinesh, uh, this is related to uh, uh, AWS. Can you open the AWS? So I created a role, snow role, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. need to give. Uh, I mean, I have given read-only uh, policy. So what you have mm -hmm. given here? So for updating the okay. um, policy. For this role, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you click on it? Okay. So which uh, uh, policy you have given here? This one, trusted relationship. You are yeah, this one, about. Amazon S3 full access. No, no, Amazon, Amazon S3 full access. No, why? Because we need to update the trusted policy, ARN and uh, actional ID, right? Yeah, this one. So this one, right? Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes. Type, so I have document. given read-only access, so I don't... So I don't have the okay. full of actional ID structure. Uh, you, you, you can give the complete, uh, the full access to manage services. So here, let me show you access level, full access, right? Mm. You can give the full yes. access, then it will allow. Okay. okay. And for the read only, uh, I didn't get the, um, the complete uh, okay. structure of the XML for updating okay. the year and end. Okay. Mm. It so, do you have any uh, small document for user creation and groups and roles in a document? User creation, groups and roles. Uh, I don't have any document. Uh, let me check that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, I will view the same credentials of mine. Okay. You can use these credentials for the practice. I, yesterday, I forgot to send these credentials. I will send it today in your uh, emails. Okay. To your emails. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow.